with us today, we've got uh, Elvin Lau and Elliot Kuhn, the two Malaysian photographers who worked on this <laughs> program. And uh, I think I think what we're going to talk about is it's this one is going to be semi-informal. So so what what we're going to talk about today is really about um, I think r to talk about uh, the process of um, the program uh, and uh, just to get some reflections and thoughts about things in general. So welcome, guys. Thanks for being here. It's nice to be here. Hello. <laughs> So uh, yeah, um, maybe uh, e each of you can take turns to just talk a little bit about the project, uh, your projects, individual projects, what it's about, and then maybe also give a sort of an overview of the other works, if that's possible. Hmm? Yeah. Later on, so 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 I think uh, just your 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 projects, uh, what are they? Very quickly, um, and. So maybe Elvin, you can go first. Hi. Um, how do I start? Okay. 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 Why do I s why I've started the project is because um, there was this very strong dissatisfaction towards the um, idea of relationship and how um, how Tinder has become part of you know our daily lives at least for. You know, whoever who participates or uses Tinder on a more regular basis. Um, wait, I'm nervous. <laughs> uh, and then, so the, the the dissatisfaction part is because I, I guess it, it's come to the point where communication has become so vague in 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 a sense where I think people don't really communicate that well anymore. It, it, it becomes instantaneous and disposable at the same time. I mean, I feel like I've repeated this, this talk over and over already, but I, I feel like there's always a point where I could always add. Um, I try to use Tinder as a communicative project at the same time is because I feel, I mean, in, in a way I feel that I personally crave for human interaction more than anything that's just physical. And I really like talking to people actually, if specifically if they have really good ideas. And I find that to be very interesting, especially if you meet someone online and like the boundaries of it, it's, it's much beyond than that, than just you trying to have an intention of engaging in whatever that, whatever that you want from the other individual online. So with me, it's more of a, I mean, I want something out of it, but I want the communicative part of it. And therefore, it goes back to this project where when I first pitched this project, I had sort of a data analyst on how people use Tinder and how people have actually gotten married through Tinder or whatever online dating sites. It's actually very liberating to look at the data. It's because it really brings people from different corners of the part of the world regardless of whatever it is. And it, I mean, it took me by surprise for a little bit. At the same time, not that surprised because of how the internet has changed the way we receive information and sorts like that. So it, it started with that. And with the very initial of the project, it was very simple at the sense that I would just want to meet people from Tinder and just to photograph them. I mean, the concept, the concept was to engage in something, but at the same time, I wanted the project to look different as well, and therefore it wasn't that, that much focused on Tinder at the same time. It become like an expression of my own angst towards the idea of relationship and love in the contemporary scape that we exist in right now. Um, yeah, so therefore, like the, the project actually took a huge turn from what I envisioned it to be. It, I had, I've seen a few projects that's based off of um, Tinder as as its own very basis, and I took it, uh, it. That it sort of become a critique of that kind of projects as well, because you actually meet people and you explore whatever that's vulnerable to them, and then you have photographs of them in their own bedroom, and I just thought. 
that's not what vulnerability is. That's that's just literally a photograph of someone in their bedroom and you don't communicate beyond the project. So in a way I make the effort to keep in touch with people I've met from Tinder and I mean they're still here. I still talk to them, which is I think it's great. And I've met I've dated a few people off Tinder and I still keep in contact with them. So um one of the main intentions is also to like look back at this project, maybe like five or ten years from now, how we all would probably look at how humans interact at this time of our lives, because you never really know communication. Yeah, I think that kind of wraps up what's the project about for now. In case there's any question, please do ask. Them. Just I think I'm missing a lot of points. Yeah, we can just uh, holler from where you are sitting. Uh, there's a floating microphone around, so they're going to speak into the mic, but uh, at any time, just raise your hands. Thank you, Elvin. Ali? Okay, <coughs> and uh, my project is about uh, the, the young people of Orang Asli uh, in uh, Peninsula Mal uh, Malaysia, this slide. And, uh, and uh, I went to uh, uh, two to three uh, villages, uh, or honestly, villages uh, in Romping, in Pahang, and uh, Camerons. And uh, so um, I went, uh, I went there with uh, with an open open mind and open heart. And because I never done this uh, this sort of uh, uh, documentary before. Uh, what I did was uh, 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 was street photography, and I love action. I love simultan you know, uh, simultaneous uh, kind of shots. I like chaos. You know, suddenly I went to the village. You know, it's like whoa, everything, <laughs> everything is so different, and uh, my expectation is so uh, so out of place, and uh, it's different than what I expected. So I began with uh, by communicate with the young people, the, with families, and talk to those uh, uh, who 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 is who is in a youth uh, instead of uh, kanak kanak. You know, <laughs> of course kanak kanak. You know, we get a lot of stories from them. But the young people, they they are very developed and they are going through this process of growing up and knowing about themselves and knowing about. The society and knowing about the the, uh, the the government and all this stuff, so they will have a lot of point of views. So uh, I began with a lot of uh, uh, interviews with uh, with uh, the individuals, and uh, uh, at first I want to do something like very National Geographic kind of, you know. Uh, 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 language, uh, phot photo language, and uh, going into uh, a village, and you know, uh, uh, with a, a documentary kind of uh, uh, photography, you know, in mind. But I just couldn't do it because <laughs> it's, it's so it's, it's so um, it, the the vibe and also the. The, the the people are so different, so I need to spend a lot of time talking talking to them. So I spent uh, like uh, since uh, last year's uh, November December about five months, go in and out with this to these villagers, you know, and talk to them. Uh, what you see uh, in on the wall is very general and very macro kind of a kind of a view. Uh, of uh, the young people of uh, Oran Asli and what I went through uh, with them is very micro which is very individual uh, I would love to share some of their stories uh, with you so that when you look at the work you will have a, a, a bigger uh, picture of uh, why do I want to do this and why do I want to follow their stories and uh, let me show you uh, one photograph. This is in Rongping. And you can see uh, it's very bare. Uh, they were moved out from their original place 
and uh, gov- because the government won that particular spot uh, to to plant uh, palm oil uh, palm palm trees for for the industry so they talked to the uh, they talked to the uh, uh, the dukun which is the 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 head of the the village and uh, they make a deal and uh, if they uh, can move out from here and the government can f- set a place for them build a, a nice place and uh, with electricity and uh, water for them you know uh, would they be interested and then the duke could say yes you know if you don't uh, you know uh, and and they uh, and the government say that we allow the orasi to work in a palm palm field you know so that they can get some income you know so they shift them to this place very minimal minimal setup <sighs> there's there's no road there's there only paved way f- the the way with uh, with sand uh, the, the house is just at up houses and uh, yeah they have electricity they have water but uh, they they are really out from their 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 zone which is they they used to hunt they used to to farm so they have bar- they have nothing there so what happened is uh, uh, they have to they have nothing so they have to find more jobs and they just struggle financially so what happened here is this photo I want to talk about is uh, this boy uh, wow this boy okay this boy uh, is now eight years old when he was born eight years ago in in the village there's no uh, it's, it's in the in a poverty family you know there's no food uh, there's very little cash so the boy was born with nothing and there's no milk they have no money to buy milk they feed him with tea tea survive on tea <laughs> <laughs> a baby <laughs> survived on tea for eight months. No milk, just tea leaves. Now malnutrition, and uh, and at the end, the grandpa, the ato of this boy, uh, want to give up his life. Eight months old, he went into the jungle and dig a hole, put the baby beside the hole, and he, he dig, and uh, ready to bury him alive. <laughs> so what happened was, my, my friend who is an NGO in this uh, area of the village, uh, passed by with a motorbike, and saw him, saw the ato, what, what, has, what he has done, uh, what he is doing in uh, 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 digging the, 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 the ground, and the baby beside the, beside the hole is asked, ato, uh, you know, uh, apa yang kau buat ni, you know? Oh, then ato to him, saya kita tak mau, tak mau lah, ini bayi, sudah dia boleh mati lah. He can die already, so he's ready to, to put him to, <laughs> To the hole and buried him alive. So my friend, who is who was a, a pastor at this area, uh, help out uh, at this villagers, took him and said, "Ato, if you don't want this child, you confirm you don't want this child." The ato said, "No, I don't want this child. Can I have it?" So the ato brought the baby back, who <laughs> brought him back home, tell his wife. This is what's happened, and they're newly married. You know <laughs> and they're, what? They're newly married, and they went to this village, and he brought back a kid, <laughs> eight years, eight months old, and feed him milk as anything that he could, and raise him up uh, until now he's eight years old, and they name him uh, Bowman. Everyone in the village call him Bowman. What is Bowman? Bowman means short form of Superman. Because he couldn't die, <laughs> he didn't die. So everyone calls him Boban, Boban, Boban. You know, and he lives so happy. He's like, and you know, he's like the happiest kid in the village. And yo, you know, abang, yo, you know. So this is, 
one of the story of poverty, living in the poverty in the in the Ora Asli uh, land. They have where you know they have no food. They have uh, not enough job to sustain their lives. And I thank God for this friend of mine. Really took him and uh, uh, took him in and raised him up like his own child. When I listen to this story, and this story is the first story I ever listen in this in this village. That's like I got to continue this project. That inspire me to. I want to know everyone, and there are many more stories. I can't wait to tell you every one story that I have listened to them. But this is one of the story that I want to share with you. That uh, that give a lot of question to me at the end. I don't get an answer when I do this project for this Orang Asli youth, for the young people. I only get answer. Uh, I only get questions. How are they going to face the society, the urban, the prejudice? How are they going to continue their 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 privilege as an orang asli and also their their culture? So, yeah, please ask me questions. <laughs> I can't, you know, tell you the whole story. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cool. Um, thanks, Alit and David. Um. Speaking about, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a question for, for both of you. You do your research. Both of you are talking to people in very different ways, but you're both talking to people. You're collecting information. How does that knowledge inform your photography? That's my question. I guess for my part, it's um, a bit of it takes. A, I I take bits of what they say throughout the conversation as well, and I observe them how they are as people, and then sort of translate that into the photographs. Because if you, you know, like to conceptualize the photography itself, just use one single word as an essence to that, and then put it into the picture, and to use a few words and then to depict it as a image itself. Yeah, that's sort of how I use the data and the quality of the conversation and translate that into photographs. Yeah. Yeah, for me is uh because the story is very direct and uh uh is very uh, uh it, it almost like a, a news itself. <laughs> and uh and I I, I, I do a lot of research on the photo language uh, also with, you know, like Sao, Sao Dago, Sao Gado, Sao Dago, you know, and uh, the, the documentary photographer. The images are, are very direct. Uh, it's like really straight to your face, like war images, you know, and it's like, yo, this is what's happening. Um, but for, for me, I, I learn. Uh, 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 I want to to express in a very different way that where I I want to give a, a, an image and information all this information to to let you uh, to let the audience to to have uh, a sense of uh, of hope uh, a sense of uh, qu questions like when you see them you you don't see the the, the poor you don't see the, the the weak and also you don't see the uh, the the sick. Uh, but when you see the images, you will. I, I would love them. I would love the audience to to ask, who are they? And it it looks hopeful. It looks you know so so much uh, so much uh, 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 future uh, for them. Uh, but where else? All of them are asking how <laughs> how is their future is gonna be? So uh, so that is how I I'm I learn to to translate this to the photography. Yeah. Well, one of the big aspects of your work, especially, is dealing with people who, whose future is very uncertain. Yes. And I think uh, being a young person from that community is even more confusing because uh, you hear stories of uh, you know, everybody else going to school and you can't go to school. Yes. And uh, so, you know, that whole uh, what, what we uh, mark it as being the good way to go forward in life. Uh, you know, you go to school, you, you finish that, you go to college, you finish that, you get a job, yeah. and you finish that, and then, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, but 
with, with, with this bunch of kids, it does seem to me that they must have a very hard time fi figuring out their future in this tangent because there's no place for them. Yeah. I'm curious as to if they made up their own tangent and if there is such a tangent for them or are they just, uh, you know, in some way lost in the whole mix of things, which I, I, I think uh, could be a very confusing time. But uh, do you think that uh, there must be some kind of a vision of the future for, for them and, and, and what, what does that look like? W would you know? Honestly, I really, I really don't know. Yeah. Uh, because um, as they tell me the stories, they were hoping, uh, at they are glad as well, that finally there is someone here to hear their, their heart. And all of them wish that from doing this, their voice can be heard uh, to, I mean, here or, you know, elsewhere. So that they hope that one day, help may or may not come, but at least they are, they are at ease at heart that, oh, you are here to listen to my story, where no one wants, nobody cares for us uh, in school. Uh, their friends don't want to come into their territory because they felt that their, their place is uh, low class. Mm. You live in a, in a, in an atas, uh, atap house, wooden house, you know, you guys are a different level from me. And also, uh, because they are so good with sports, some of them good with studies, because they are so good in what they are doing, and at the same time, they are so good with what, who being who they are in hunting, and you know, so good with nature. The people around them. Uh, felt insecure about their their skills and there that's when they start uh being uh they cause all this this uh this prejudice mm -hmm. up and and uh they don't like them because they are good because of who they are so these are the things that they are uh, they're facing and uh and also they are uh the, the NGO are try their best to help them with funding them to to step for for continuing their studies, uh, for 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 instance, there's this this uh, this girl Itun. Her name is Itun. She's studying fifteen. After after her her PMR, she can't continue because her father stopped him to continue, so that she can work with her father uh, in a, in in a fee, in in a in in op jobs to earn money to 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 feed the other five siblings. So these are the, the cases that, uh, that is, is going around and there are many more other complicated uh, status. So what I hope is just to let uh, the world to have a glimpse at least that, that how are these uh, uh, young people is going through, yeah. Thank you. Alvin. Uh, Looking at your photos, it, um, I'm just wondering um, why did you choose that kind of visual language for the project? Uh, gi given that it's a project about a marketing tool to sell yourself, right? Uh, and uh, the way people use photographs on Tinder is a very different manner in how you photograph the project. And uh, I think uh, we had a chat about this and uh, we talked about how the work seems to be neither rooted in reality nor is it rooted in the World Wide Web. It's somewhere floating in the purgatory in between. You know, so uh, would you like to 
comment about that? Um, it's I wasn't even aware of it at first actually, like until I saw the pictures in sequence, and then and I thought, yeah, it actually looks like Tinder profile pictures because mm. they actually exist in the purgatory. Mm. So you you have I think eight panels of pic like eight panels of boxes that you can actually select, and how you yeah you can just put whatever pictures that you want, and it's I, I guess people have this term of. Um, people have always been misinterpreting this word. It's called curating. Mm. They call it curating their own profiles, and I think that's a ridiculous term. Just selecting pictures, <coughs> <laughs> and then badly, badly <laughs> selecting pictures. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, actually, I had to like teach some people how to what what's the best angle you can use, mm. like for their profile pictures. I mean, that's another story. Um, yeah, it's sort of to emulate that sense of. Being that's not here that and not there as well, and it it's it's a floating space. And when it comes to emotions, you can't really pinpoint where it is. I mean, to to write it into words, you can put it visually, you can put it into a moving image. Yeah, that's one thing. That's a way. I guess this is my way of putting emotions into images. Yeah. So, it the idea of love, modern relationships, and Tinder it kind of plays into part of that. So I guess decontextualizing the context of anything that has a geographical positioning in the pictures, we, can't, we kind of give it away. Mm. Like people won't be, fo won't be too focused on the idea itself, but they'll be focused on where is this being photographed? How is this being photographed? So I guess taking the idea of where it is, it's, it gives, the audience a little bit more thinking space as well to think of it in a more emotional aspects instead of it being a geographical context where where this work was made yeah yeah and also i think uh it's the element of time is also removed yeah a so i mean to some point and you can kind of look I was mentioning earlier because you can kind of look back at it maybe in five or ten years. Mm -hmm. So the context of time and how the context of human communication would probably be vastly different when it comes, you know, mm -hmm. in 2018, right? Yeah, 2018. Like maybe 2028, uh, 2030, th there'll be some way of communication which is vastly different at the same time. Could be more improvised or could be more connected. So... I guess it's supposed to be made timeless in the same way. Yeah. So like the the image of the burning paper. Mm. So you kind of liberate something and give it away. Wait it for it to rebirth or something like that. So it plays a lot of part in that as well. And uh, how does your work... I, I, I mean, I, I think through the process of making your own work, um, the other... Photographers were making that work as well, but I don't think any of you know exactly how the other photographers' work will pan out in the end. So, but now looking back at what the other ten have produced, how do you see your work in that light? As in, um, what part does each of your work play in the greater exhibition? Uh, talking about the elements of youth and the future. I guess I try to focus more on the emotional aspect as well, not trying to focus on current issues. Um, I guess that's the very basis of my own interests, um, of like observing human beings in a more metaphysical way instead of just physical. Yeah, that's mm. that's really where my main interest is at when it comes to. If I mean, I would say the work it's very documentarian in its own nature as well. It's not just. I mean, from the picture itself, it doesn't look like a documentary photography, but for me, it's a documentary of human emotions. So I'm more into that plane where it doesn't seem like anything. Mm. So I guess it, it plays a good dynamic as well because when you look at 12 different works, there's 12, it, it, it sort of completes and conjoins and becomes an entity. The whole world becomes, the whole exhibition becomes an entity instead of just 12. Imagine if, 12 of us were to shoot the same yep. thing. I think the whole show would look very, very monotonous. Absolutely. Yeah. Elliot? Um, I think, yeah. Uh, I am so glad uh, to, to see how 
uh, York and Toby, uh, our our mentor, how he, how they curate twelve of us, uh, twelve of our works, and how they actually uh, direct each of every one of us into a certain direction. Um, when I receive uh, uh, the the video um, uh, uh, conferencing with uh, Toby and York and. Uh, um, uh, they they are very glad that uh, I'm uh, I'm doing this story so that uh, and he how they encourage me to to go deeper to go uh, forward uh, uh, without knowing how are the others are doing uh, is really interesting and and when when the work comes out I felt there is so much uh, balance and so much poetry and. Uh, and uh, you can see the the, the images of uh, of uh, especially my 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 work my stories. There's a lot of stories, and they, I I shoot a lot of uh, some very directive kind or very informative kind of uh, uh, photographs. Uh, but they they didn't choose those works. They chose the the works which is uh, very very subtle, uh, very subtle, very poet, uh, very poetic. Uh, so that when the whole thing comes together, uh, twelve of us comes together is, oh, I'm like, oh, now I see why, what they are thinking. So, um, did what you feel about your work when you made it change after the work was put together in the whole system, like of all the work? So when you look at all the work, do you, do you feel like something about how you understood the work changed? Yeah, uh, in, in some yeah yeah I I felt like uh, you're going to be really working on our strength, on about about our, our stories and about our feelings towards uh, our work. So uh, I am very glad that twelve of us uh, have a very individual. Uh, characteristic and personality uh, in, in our work, but yet the the story of a whole uh, twelve of ours uh, are one and very poetically uh, stitched uh, with one another. So I, I felt very very amazed uh, how this whole thing turned out. Yeah. So Elvin seems to be writing notes. Um, something you want to share? Oh, can we take a question from the floor, if there's one? Yeah, Chitu. Uh -huh, I have a mic here. <laughs> um, I, I guess my responding to your last, your last comment on how the curators came and select the photos to make it fit for, for the, fit the exhibition, I, I guess my, this is a two-part question. Um, my, my, my question would be, doesn't that take away your agency in telling your story? I mean, because if you have a certain story to tell, that I mean, you you went into this village, to these kampongs, you meet these people, um, to 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 listen to their stories. You're you're telling their stories via your photos, but yet at the end of the day, you don't really get to decide how you want to tell the story. Um, <laughs> and and of course, I I, was, I also like to say, um, and I don't think that the curators had the same experience as you in the village, to to have that sort of depth of what you've experienced. To be able to to decide how the story is told, so so I think that's that's one. Um, two. Secondly, I, I want to ask um, it's a different question, totally different question from what from before. Um, what made you decide to 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 tell to go to an Oranasli, to go to Oranasli villages and take pictures of them? Like, did you have prior engagement with them? That you're like, oh, like you know, I've heard all these stories. I think I'd like to do this, or, and, and what is your continued engagement with the communities after this project, after this series, after this whole workshop? Yeah. Um, if I may contextualize the first question, uh, so basically, uh, the selection of works for the both of you. Was it completely your and Toby's ideas as to what to show and what not to show? 
or was it a negotiation? And how much input did you have? And what was the benefit of having a discussion with the mentors in terms of selecting the work? And why was that important or not important? Or was it an impediment to how your work is shown in the end? For me, uh, the time was very rushed. <laughs> and uh, I, I only have uh, basic, oh, I, Less than a whole year, you know. Yeah, it's less than a whole year. And we only have uh, how many months to shoot? How many months to shoot? Uh? Ten. Ten months? Yeah? yeah? yeah Almost. Months. Yes, yes. So, yeah. So because uh, my, my work is uh, I have to travel sometimes uh, two to three hours uh, per travel stay there for a week, uh, sometimes four days. Um, and then coming back, I have to work uh, in my, my normal life. And after that, weekend, I have to go. So in and out. Um, and I only can do for five months because after five months, my I went to an operation that <laughs> period of time, my health went uh, I My kidney got got stones and then my eczema got breaked out and it was terrible emotionally and physically, mentally, woo, cuckoo already. Uh, but in that five months of shooting, uh, uh, the mentors felt that I, I got enough of the images and uh, uh, the st the I gave them a very general kind of story and then I did uh, gave them the individual stories as well, uh, the, as 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 when when we do the the catch up and uh, then we I, I give them I email them the the, the stories and uh, and, the, and the images, uh, but we really we didn't really discuss on okay which one Elliot what do you think will this work or not, uh, because it's, everything is so rushed and our time is different, and they they all of them have. Yeah, how how they also have to after that that half an hour of video conference or sometimes one hour, uh, they have to rush for the next one uh, with another photographer. So everything is very uh, kind of rush, I think. Uh, but uh, every they they are very on point. They are very on point. If if uh, they have no problem with your work and your stories, then then you're fine, continue, keep it going. But if they felt like, oh, you are really not producing, then they spend more time like, you know, grilling you and work on your brain. Uh, so, but in terms of the selection? In terms of the selection, uh, I give, we, all of us give him the whole pal, uh, my pal, and uh, they chose 30, 30 images, and then they show me that, okay, guys, this 30, uh, is a good shot. We're gonna choose from here. So, um, but they didn't work with uh, with me about uh, Elliot. Uh, how many images uh, do you want, or how are you gonna place them? Uh, it's, it's totally their their in in their control. So I have no uh, uh, no. I'm not saying that we have no say. I just fully allow them uh, to curate my my work. Uh, and they heard my stories and all, uh, so now uh, it's up entirely up to them. Yeah. Yep. For uh, Elfin? Negotiations and arguments. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted my work to look a specific way. I didn't want it, but I think, in a way, we trust um, because we've seen them curated works before, and it's they actually do. I mean, as much as they're photographers, but as artists and curators themselves, I just thought, well, they actually can do a lot more work. And it's kind of bizarre to see how fast they work. And yeah, they actually for my set, they actually sent in about three or four different options, so I could <coughs> negotiate with them as well, like what images that I really wanted to be as part of the exhibition and what's to be inside the book. So and then we just finally reached a point saying, yeah, okay, that's that's good. Yeah. So, as I guess as the photographer ourselves we have to present our points really straightforward across to them as well 
so they really understand what's the story and what's the idea behind and how you really you just basically have to give them what's in your head they have to contextualize it and that that's what makes curating the works easier at the same time so the curators themselves they know what it is they know what everyone thinks about the work yeah and i guess uh when you work that way might be slightly unconventional as well but when you work that way uh there's also a recontextualization from a third party of opinion and also uh you know, of of ideas of how the work could be um but i mean in retrospect la, i mean it was that was that a good way of working or was there benefit to it I like, I like to be brainwashed by them and how they're working methodology, <laughs> 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 because they're really, really efficient, and it's, 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 it's a good practice actually to learn from. You know, I mean, I'm biased for sure with because I like their works, and not to say copy but emulate, but to take the best points of how they work and function as artists and photographers. It's good practice actually for someone. Uh, young like me, who has zero experience in the field when it comes to curating, when it comes to editing, when it comes to talking about work. I think, not to say completely take over a form of work, but to learn from what I think is the best points. I think that's a really good way to learn. So in a way, I, I guess there is a sort of an editorial approach to putting the work together for an exhibition, which may not come off as the the way of uh, an artist showing their work, but I I think uh, it's a very different process because I think you're working with uh, people who you've worked for over a year, who obviously uh, have a very strict system of working and understand your work quite well, and then you're saying, okay, you know, I've done all of this work and this is what I think, and I'm going to put it over to you, and and you give it to these people to kind of like crunch it down, process it, grill you about why, about your selections, and then t and then have them tell you about why they think these selections work and, and what works and what doesn't work. I think it's a very different way of working, uh, and I and I think there's qu quite a bit of merit in working that way. Uh, but I I I see where you're coming from, now Because the thing is, uh, one does wonder um, if that's the case, then you know, whose work is it really? If I'm if my ad, ad because I'm I'm just um, I'm I'm speaking I mean for actually it's more of an f on behalf of Elliot's work actually because I mean um, I feel that if people are pouring out their stories to you um, and I've I've been through that before I've you know where especially going to the Oranasli village yeah. it's the most emotionally tiring thing because yeah, people absolutely. are lining up to just to just gripe 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 yeah. And it's it's tiring, and and people are entrusting that stories, those stories to you. Yeah, you know that's that's that you you sort of accept receive that responsibility. Yeah, um, of of their stories. Yeah, and especially if you're a photographer, filmmaker, whatever, you have that task to to tell that story. Yeah, and and so so that sort of bothered me a bit when yeah when that agency to tell that story has was sort of removed. So <laughs> no, I think I think yeah. I know you're right, and that's a very uh, deep and important concern. I think also sometimes you know, when you've got like 250 photos, and which means 250 stories, then uh, you I think at some point, especially because of Elliot being in and out of hospital and stuff like that, I think you at some point will need some sort of uh, uh, reflection by a third party. You know, I mean, people in the know. Uh, as to what may or may not work, but uh, yeah, without without losing the essence of uh, yeah. what is being what you are trying to communicate, like, Because yeah. the thing is, I, I think what you see on the walls is just a fraction of what stories and works were actually made. But the thing is, obviously, you can't show everything because that will put people to sleep. Uh, I, so at the same time, I think it's just a decision. Yeah. How, how how do you decide? what to show, how to communicate uh, very swiftly, effectively to get the idea across. I, th I think that's primarily that. 
and I, I'm I'm only responding because I think um I I kind of see where you're coming. And and like I said, it has an editorial approach because like uh even uh, in National Geographic or you know, uh, any of the big magazines, when you go out on an assignment, you go and shoot something and you come back with uh, ten thousand photos and you sit with the editor and, and the editor says like, Okay, you know what? I think that's the story. That's the article. This is the story. So we'll just select these few photos. And then you as the photographer would say, like, nah, 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 you have to put this picture in. And that one has to be big. And this and that. And then you go back and forth. And the thing is, it in uh, like, like I do a bit of, of this type of work as well. And I don't get that privilege because, you know, uh, I'm not a big National Geographic photo photographer. But when you work with the very big guys, um, there's this huge uh, reliance uh, between the photographer and the editor to kind of uh, counter check each other and be each other's uh, sort of uh, guide in order to come up with a piece in the geographic that is compelling and uh, you know um, dutifully tells a story. So uh, I think because also uh, because Jorg and Toby come from a that sort of journalistic background as well. So I think the working method methodology would be somewhat influenced that way. La. Sorry, I don't mean to hawk this. Sure. Uh, no, it's, but it's just that, I mean, like, if you speak within that context of, say, natural, National Geographic editorials and photojournalism, you know, it's, it's always contextualized by, say, a accompanying article or, yeah. or, or accompanying photo captions. So, so, you know, so, like, what, why? Why I'm picking on that? Okay, uh, okay. I have a soft spot for for indigenous people issues because I work with indigenous peoples, and but uh, it, mm, I what came off unsatisfying for me was that you you can't really tell a bunch of stories with a bunch of photos. As strong as the photos are, I, I mean, it it will always be contextualized by say. A, a properly written story, a, a, a shit ton of captions, yeah. so... <laughs> Without a doubt. So, yeah. Yeah, that's why I love uh, talks like this, so that I can... I can uh, communicate their stories, individual stories, through not all, not all of them, if possibly all I will give, you know? But that's why I love talking to uh, to all of you, share with you about their stories, because uh, most of the stories are uh, are not on the wall, you know. So uh, that's why uh, the texts and uh, the the talks like this are, are precious to me, uh, to to share with uh, uh, each or one of you uh, about them. And uh, uh, I do carry. I understand that feeling, man. You know, you hear the story, you felt like. <laughs> You are responsible now, you know. I felt my I'm responsible of their stories. I'm I'm gonna, you know, you know. I connected it with their heart, you know, and uh, but with that five months of short short five is is very short for me, and I I couldn't uh, uh, get uh, uh, enough images of the like I thought of. I uh, want to do a story of Bowman, just story of Bowman, just following him. Uh, uh, but uh, because of time, I, I I couldn't produce a lot of uh, story of Bowman, and but I have to go to other villages, because of uh, uh, I, I I did ask uh, a few uh, a few openings uh, to to go in uh, and uh, to 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 engage with them. So uh, that's why my my photographs are uh, very very wide, uh, instead of channeling to one story, and uh, but because I am there. I hear individual stories, you know. Oh, I forgot one thing is also um, what York and Toby also suggest that that uh, uh, do an overview, do a capture an overview of how the young or actually lives and how their lives uh, lives. Uh, capture the overview instead of go channel to one one story. Uh, that's what they 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 wanted, yeah, you know, and so I went for it. Uh, but it's like when I was there, and then I when I hear all this individual story, that captured my heart. 
how I wish I can do one story, each of story of one of them, and time is running. I felt ah, I totally feel feel how you feel, you know. And I want to answer your your second question, where uh, how do I engage? Why do I want to do or ask these stories? Because I grew up uh, in church. And I do follow uh, the, some pastors going to the Orasi villages to help them to, to, to help them build toilets, kitchen, you know, and uh, help them to uh, uh, teach them how to do farming, uh, you know, all the other stuff, and uh, just to help uh, uh, bring food for them. And from there on, then I, I see uh, the, the the people and the young people. And I have a special heart, uh, have have special place for all of them. So when this title comes in, young young people and the young and the future, wow! It's like, how am I going to do it in urban style? You know, and everyone is doing a uh, 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 their their story uh, 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 kind of urban. I so I also like do want to do another urban work, then. I got a call. Hey, Elliot, I'm going to this Orasi village. Are you interested to follow me? And I'm like, hey, you know. They're like, hey, why not? I do a story of them, and uh, so I. That's how I started, and uh, then I hear that from the parents as well. Uh, so now, how? Uh, what are the what's next, right? After this exhibition, what did I do? Uh, of course, I I went back to give uh, uh, the give them a visit, share with them my work, uh, give them give them the book, and then uh, uh, this is what what we are doing, and also there are more openings for me to go back to there the Elliot any time you want, come back and uh, do s- stories, you know, come back and stay or photographers anytime. So there are openings. So there are questions. Elliot, are you going to continue the stories, you know, or not? Yeah. So I am still, you know, yeah. Okay. So um, we probably like take this for another five minutes or, or yeah. But Elvin, you want to share a few things or not? No. Y- Any questions? Maybe? Questions? Um, I guess ju- I just want to know from the ideation to the planning to the execution and till now that you are able to exhibit the works so successfully everywhere what is the biggest takeaway and learning from this entire thing yeah or well, the project That's itself right. i guess it's it's a good personal learning p- curve when it comes to like what how what and how to idealize relationships and love in general so i guess it's 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 became more of a lesson just like y- this you can actually go beyond and like the word of love just stretches out. Yeah. Any more questions? Questions? Hello. Hello there, Elvin. Hello, Ben. Hi. So uh, I've, I've known you for a long time now, so I'm going to give you a more personal question here because I know nothing about photography. Uh, <laughs> but I just want to ask, right, uh, your pieces about uh, relationships and Tinder and uh, social media and all that, I realize that it's, even though it's like you say purgatory, it's not really online, doesn't seem like that. Uh, it's very, the subject itself seems to be very attached to like a younger demographic, you know, like millennials, especially on that side, I'm just, I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I really want to know uh, how, because you say it was a liberating experience for you and you say that the word of love just stretches out, how has doing this project actually affected how you view your own demographic? You know, a person who's squarely in the millennial or like the younger uh, generation. I feel like there's hope for pe- for us. <laughs> there's hope for us, you know, for us in our 20s especially. Yeah, it's actually not that bad, you know, like as, 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 as the media portrays what Tinder is, I, I find that just a lot of decent people on Tinder and online, you know? It's, I mean, it, it's sort of, you have to sift through the surface of it. And I think it's a good lesson for me. It's like, yeah, you really don't judge the book by the cover, I guess. No one's really critical if you have a Facebook account, but if you have a Tinder account, then yeah. problems. <laughs> Social uh, yeah. Yeah, stigma. 
Um, I mean, I, I think looking at Elvin's work and reflecting <coughs> upon it personally as a person who is uh, obviously uh, grew up in a very different generation, um, I think the issues are the same. Um, and this idea of love expanding and having no real clear boundary and uh, how love can manifest into <coughs> very different forms. I think these are things that we've all played with uh, in our generations. I mean, mine, Cheryl's, um, and, 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 <laughs> and no. So I'm, I'm, I'm making a point. My point is that actually this work, while it is presumably uh, planted and rooted in this generation, I think it really speaks to everyone. Uh, it, it really is about this fragility of um, of a very very deep emotion. It's also uh, you know about human relationships. You know, it's like a whatever you deem a relationship to be. You know, and and, and how these relationships can start in one way and go through a process and then come out a different way and how those relationships can still be sustained as they morph and as <coughs> they change shape, you know, and, and, and how that can be uh, pushed through time and space, you know? And I think, I think that's, that's what's, to me, beautiful about the work. It's very tender, it's very um, forgiving, yeah. Personally, that's what I feel. Questions? You guys want to wrap up? Two of you? Yeah, yeah maybe uh, one minute each, and then we we'll wrap up, and then um, we'll call it a day. Elliot, you want to start? Yeah. Uh, If you see the whole work of 12 of us, um, in life you may lose many things. You lose position, you lose opportunity, you lose your family, you lose status, but one thing that we must not lose is ourselves, which is identity. And I think, and I also believe that 12 of us uh, produce work about finding themselves and uh, want to identify who they are and also want to identify uh, to ask who, who what, what are the young generations are, are facing, what they are looking for. And at the same time, for the audience, uh, for the young and old, when they look into our works, they can relate to these stories so that they will know who are they and who are they. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so honored and humbled and privileged to be here to share the, the stories and my work with uh, all of you. Thank you so much. Elvin? I don't have much to say. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, I'm, just kind of try I'm just trying to expand more of this work. Um, and there should be a continuation of it. How so? I don't know. In okay. I don't so know. you don't know your direction yet? I don't know. <laughs> but I would like to continue more about it. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for coming. And if there's more questions, just please ask. Yeah, I'm always ready to talk. So, yeah. I think I'm missing out a lot of points. Yeah. That's how it is. Um, yeah, so thanks everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for spending your Saturday with us. 
I hope uh, you enjoyed the conversations. There's going to be another one on photography books, uh, independently published photo books <laughs> that's uh, happening next weekend here, same time. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Uh, it has um, literally nothing to do with this exhibition, but I thought uh, in conjunction with the exhibition, it would be nice to look at what other people have been making uh, through their own little uh, photo projects and their own savings and what they've come up with. So uh, the book, We Will Have Been Young, is um, stored outside for a very special price. Uh, I think it's a big discount. I think usually it's a lot more expensive. So uh, do pick up a copy. Uh, I think it's uh, definitely something that's worth uh, keeping on your shelf. As well as, you know, if you know someone who's got a birthday coming up, I think that that's quite a nice gift as well. Sorry. Okay. Actually, do you want to tell about the project? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Ilham and uh, Obscura Festival running a very informal, no pictures, uh, very, very informal <laughs> contest on Instagram. Shut down. Um, hashtag, just follow the hashtag WWHBY. We will have been young. X, okay? Anyone can take part. Anyone who calls Southeast Asia home, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your snapshot is. The theme is youth and the future. It's your interpretation of it. You do not have to be young. I'm not looking at you, Cheryl. Um, you do not. No, no. <laughs> Seriously. <I> mean, <laughs> that was mean. Um, no one should give me a mic ever. Uh, you don't. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to be young. In fact, we are approaching uh, some much, much older people whom we hope will take part because, you know, uh, the future is in their hands now. Yeah, and they need to look out for the young people. So anybody at all, anything from Southeast Asia, hashtag Ilham Gallery, hashtag yeah. Obscura Festival, hashtag WWHBYX. With an X. Yeah, okay, and we'll repost the ones that yeah. catch our eye. So the thing is, uh, the it, it's, it's just an, an idea that we had to expand the project uh, so that others can also, t uh, you know, share their stories of youth and the future, you know, uh, in that sense, and uh, have a greater repository of stories and uh, stuff on Instagram. So please um, participate because it's fun i mean like you know it, it's just nice to have uh at the end of this exhibition other stories other people other things you know uh, other uh, go price go price go price small price uh. <laughs> so 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 you have to go to our instagrams uh or ilham's instagram uh i think all the information is that got price yes yeah, so thanks everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for the lovely sound. Thank you, Chitu, for your recording. Yay. Th thanks, Sharon. Thank you, Ilham Gallery. Thank you, the Good Institute. Thank you, yeah. Miriam. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. For being here. And thank all of you for making this happen. Without you, there's no talk. Yeah. So thanks for being interested. And uh, we'll see you next week.